heavy rains which lashed sections of the island at the start of the weekend caused near misses in at least two communities. In Zion Hill, St. Mary, a man and his sons were almost killed when a tree came crashing onto their roof as they slept early Saturday morning. TVJ's Krista Campbell has their story. Right you now, JPS, tears in my eye. Because yo, if this, the damage may you them. Darian Reed still trying to get over his brush with death after a huge tree outside his gate fell on his roof sometime after 2 o'clock Saturday morning. He said he and his two young children were sleeping when it happened. I God make the, the wire up at the top of so strong enough to hold up the tree so the tree could have slide. So it not drop in the middle of the house, so it just slide and drop on the part of the veranda there, so you see. He's upset that his efforts to prevent an incident like this were ignored. He says he's made contact with the Jamaica Public Service Company several times before building his house here. I sent numerous emails, I took pictures, I went there after the construction and they still say that they cannot do anything because the trees are not located on my property. Went even to the parish council, sent emails to the political ombudsman, everybody. Four times since me live here, one piece of limb drop off of this and bust down the way a JPS come. One, two piece bust down off of this JPS come. One piece bust down off of that J, JPS come. And then still can't remove all I tree them in entirety. Now the people say they're in even more danger with the fallen tree, which has brought down power lines and is blocking the main road. It right. still look like light current day in the high tension because light, the further up the road, I just pan this part of the road. So all we there so stand up, we not even know if it's going to kill the same way. You see on Sunday going to church, my always run. Why? Because I'm afraid the tree tear down. And it's not the first one Sunday we were coming from church and when our church brother, just as he reached nearby here, peace came down and he have his skip. Krista Campbell, TVJ News. Welcome back to Primetime News. Special welcome to the folks watching on OneSpotMedia.com. Up first this evening, the tourism ministry is in damage control mode as the ripple effects of British tour operator Thomas Cook's collapse Sunday night continues to take shape. Hundreds of thousands of travelers across the world have been affected, including right here in Jamaica. TVJ's Herman Green reports. Tour operator Thomas Cook's decision to enter into compulsory liquidation and cease operation with immediate effect on Sunday left hundreds of thousands of British travelers worldwide stranded. Jamaican hoteliers have had their fair share of these travelers, with Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett confirming that 311 such visitors were stranded in Jamaica. The UK government has since arranged repatriation flights for its citizens. But with weekly rotations of Thomas Cook travelers, which usually bring some 1,800 visitors to Jamaica now in doubt, the ministry is now rushing to fix or replace these arrangements. We're moving with great haste. In fact, tomorrow I go to London to begin that process of recovering um, as much of that 1800 as possible. Heading into the 2019-2020 tourism winter season, Mr. Bartlett says the ministry had anticipated increased visitor arrivals and stopovers. However, while remaining optimistic, he admits that this new development will create challenges for those targets. Uh, we have 10 rotations out of the Nordics uh, between this now October and March of next year. But we have already moved to, to speak to other airlines um, and, and the tour operators like TUI to, to pick up that slack. Uh, there's a German uh, fallout too, which again, um, TUI will come into play. And there's a small fallout out of Canada, which is also being covered. So we are taking the steps. I'm going there. We're being aggressive about it. Um, we're going to continue to show that Jamaica is a destination that is open um, to everyone, particularly our friends in Europe who have been affected by this. It's understood that while Thomas Cook has been having financial issues for several months, Sunday's declaration was still a surprise. The Jamaica Hotel and Tourist Association, JHTA, confirmed that several hotels, including Half Moon, Round Hill and Ibera Star, host varying numbers of visitors through Thomas Cook packages. The company liquidation now raises questions about outstanding payments to local hotels for current guests. The arrangement through the ATAL system, which is a fund that has been set up 
much like our tourism enhancement fund here, to ensure that when situations like these occur, the, um, the suppliers are protected. So they will be paid for all of those visitors who are here. There are also scores of packages for future dates between October and March. Tuesday's trip to London is expected to address those bookings, hopefully alleviating any fallout in numbers. Herman Green, TVJ News. Welcome back and we're continuing the news. Now the past 24 hours has sent the transportation sector in the corporate area into a tailspin. No buses, threats of violence, commuters in fear. The situation had left stakeholder groups scrambling all day for solutions. TVJ's Herman Green has that angle of the story. On a scale of 1 to 10, the public transport system in the corporate area would easily be given a zero for service on Tuesday. With JUTC drivers withdrawing their service, commuters, including students, were stranded across Kingston, St. Andrew, and St. Catherine. Then, amid the desperation, fear hikes of up to 400% on coastal buses and taxis, and threats of violence against vehicles found operating. It forced Transport Minister Robert Montague and other sector heads into a tailspin for solutions. I have spoken to a number of taxi presidents. I have spoken to the management at JUTC, the Transport Authority and the police. The police have given an assurance that they have increased patrols and manpower. As a matter of fact, they are now setting up operations at the Rockford Depot and at the Spanish Town Depot to provide increased patrols on the routes. But even as that was being done, threats of attacks at the halfway tree transport center. Out of an abundance of caution, our management decided that it would be best to shutter the facility because we have personnel there and await the response from the police in determining whether or not uh, the, the scare is in fact true. The stakeholder meeting involving taxi lobby groups, the JUTC and transport ministry lasted into the afternoon. Then, at Tuesday's sitting of parliament, a discussion of the situation starting with an update from the transport minister. We have consulted with the police who have established a presence at all depots and along the routes. This is to provide assurance to the taxi operators, JUCTC drivers, as well as to the traveling public. We urge the police to get to the bottom of, of the two murders that took place as two families have been affected but also to ensure that there's safety not only for the, those who are in the sector itself, the transport sector, but also for the traveling public. I don't know if the minister would want to tell us what instructions were given to the taxi men uh, or the associations, and if there's a particular route that the police buses are operating on. I'm particularly interested in persons who have to commute to the Portmore area. They have just assured that their members are out working and they have also said that they will be trying to deploy onto some routes to help to alleviate the situation. Routes close to where they work, the Transport Authority has also for the time being decided to seize operations for persons maybe running contrary to their routes in order to assist in getting persons to be, to be moved. But as to the specific routes where stakeholders have brought in vehicles, I really don't know them at this point in time. Herman Green, TVJ News. And with several versions of the incident spreading like wildfire on social media, the police are urging the public to be more responsible. This as fake news and misleading messages are being widely circulated. The police say such messages can create unnecessary panic and incite unwarranted reactions. Welcome back to Primetime News. Special welcome to the folks watching on OneSpotMedia.com. Up first this evening, chaos in the transport sector as Jamaica Urban Transit Company JUTC bus drivers withdrew their service, leaving hundreds of commuters stranded. Now this amidst concerns for their safety following the murder of one of their colleagues this morning. Now it all began last evening when it is alleged that a JUTC bus driver fatally stabbed a taxi operator. Now we'll have that story later in the bulletin, but let's join TVJ's Dwayne Anderson, who is live at the Halfway Tree Transport Center for the latest. Now, Dwayne? Thank you so much, Archie. So I'm here at the Transport Center in St. Andrew. 
the transport center is one of the hive of activities here in the parish capital. On any given day, about 200 buses shuttle persons across Kingston, St. Andrew, Portmore, and Spanish Town. That number, the number of commuters can go up to 200,000 persons. However, today, all of that ground to a halt because of a series of unfortunate, tragic, violent deaths. So what did all of that mean? Well, the JUTC estimates that it makes between 17 to 20 million dollars and on any given day so it did not make that money today because of all the commercial activity ceased now as you can imagine folks the situation is still developing so it was kind of hard to get one of the parties involved to come on air for a live interview but i did speak with them on the telephone and they told me several things and i made jottings of what they said starting with the, the jutc the JUTC, I spoke with the communications head at the JUTC, Cecil Thom Thoms, and he said the company was really trying to have a rollout sometime this afternoon, rollout of its buses to carry persons to their respective destinations. However, that did not happen. Why? Because, to quote him, the fear among the drivers is still very, very great. However, it is hoped that around 6 a.m. tomorrow, that's Wednesday, they could have a rollout of buses, you know, resumption of um, operations. But this would only be in areas like Spanish Town and Portmore. Why? Because the other depot in East Kingston, in Rockfort, that's where the driver is from that died. And they're saying, the company is saying, the JUTC, they want to give his colleagues and friends time to mourn. What, what did I also learn having spoken to other parties? Well, I spoke with the union of clerical and supervisory employees, John Levy, who heads that union, and he represents the clerical staff here at the Jamaica Urban Transit Company. He said that his workers are obviously on edge, because obviously there was a killing, but they are willing to go back to work if their safety can be assured. So the UK, however, is begging all the parties involved to take a step back and allow the police to do their work, do their investigative work and resolve it. It doesn't want anybody to take matters into their own hands. Now, I also spoke with uh, the Jamaica Association of Transport Owners and Operators, the head of that association, Louis Barton. He said that the dozens of taxi operators who are operating in the KMTR, Kingston and St. Andrew, they do not have a representative. And that is one of the main issues, according to him, why this, this situation may take some time to resolve. He said that if they had somebody, somebody at the table to speak to, the things would, would flow a little bit better. I'm getting the wrap, so I'm going to throw back to uh, Andrea. But as soon as I get something, and if they're willing to take it, I'll send it back to you guys. It's over to you, Andrea. Thank you very much, Duane, who is live at the Halfway Tree Transport Center. Meanwhile, the police are trying to determine if there's a connection between the killing of the JUTC driver and the fatal stabbing of a taxi operator last night along Washington Boulevard in St. Andrew. Here's TVJ's Kirk Wright with details. No, but no, I could drive here. A motorist using a mobile phone captured the moments after the stabbing of a taxi operator on Washington Boulevard close to 7 o'clock Monday evening. It's believed the taxi operator had a dispute with a JUTC bus driver who allegedly stabbed him several times. The taxi operator, who has since been identified as Akina Britton, O.C. Bobinile, was seen emerging from the sidewalk and was later helped to hospital where he was pronounced dead. The bus driver, who it's believed did the stabbing, was taken into custody Monday morning. The taxi driver's death sparked a thread of messages on social media with persons expressing sadness at his passing and, in some, clear threats were heard. Then at midnight, news emerged that a JUTC bus driver was shot and killed on Oxford Road in New Kingston, St. Andrew. That JUTC driver has since been identified as Mikael Donaldson of a Bull Bay St. Andrew address. The police suspect he was killed in an act of reprisal for the taxi operator's death. That is still being investigated. The bus driver, whose bus had broken down near Emancipation Park in New Kingston, St. Andrew, 
was said to be standing next to his bus while it was being worked on when men pulled up in a car and shot him. We spoke to his mother. Oh God, I look at him, my family was here with me to comfort me. And the community, everybody come out to comfort me. Everybody. Because everybody knew him. I knew him. He was, was a quiet person, good friend. Even when she knew him, she over there, so I cry. I'm good little friend. She feel it so much. I'm not working, so I have to depend, depend on him. Mr. Donaldson's family is now dealing with two deaths. His father, who was a district constable, died just over a week ago after falling from the roof of his house. Kirk Wright, TVJ News. Now, as a result of that incident, JUTC bus drivers withdrew their service, leading to chaos on the roads. Students stranded, employees deciding to return home after not being able to get a bus for work, and some private transport operators hiking their fares. Amidst all that drama, a force for good was on full display. TVJ's Anthony Log explains. Police on double duty Tuesday morning. Protector and bus driver. Hundreds of students were left stranded after the Jamaica Urban Transit Company, JUTC, withdrew its service due to the killing of an employee Monday night. I was asked by the high command to assist students along uh, Red Hills Road that uh, um, go to the Meadowbrook High School, the Calabar High School, etc. So it's just students alone? Right, but after the peak hour, a lot of adults were stranded in the Duane Park area, however, I transported them to the gas station here. From halfway tree to downtown Kingston, commuters were left helpless. Come on, we depend power on the JUTC. It's really confusing, it's really, really confusing. Here's what it looked like inside the usually busy halfway tree transport center. On the outside, increased police presence. When we visited the JUTC's Rockford depot, buses were parked. We were also informed that drivers along with union representatives were locked in a meeting with the police and the management of the company. While that was on the way, taxi operators like Jerome Walker used the crisis to their advantage. I have to increase my fear. I know every day I go on for just today alone for me. So I don't know. A normal price is $1.50 but now I charge two bills to come over town. I mean, if I go over, I'm going to charge three bills because I drop them at them yard gate, simple. Others saw things differently. People there in the car, them, them still have, tell me, say, how much dollar them have, and I still have to work with them because I am a people person. If you want to go where you, you, you have to reach, you just have to just go with the, with the flow. Back at the halfway tree transport centre, fear and panic gripped the area sometime after midday following an alleged threat. A special unit of the police was quickly dispatched to address the issue. Meanwhile, in light of the general disruption of service and uncertainty in the public transportation system, the Education Ministry advised school administrators to dismiss classes early. School administrators are also being encouraged to assess the situation and determine if affected schools can be open tomorrow. Anthony Log, TVJ News. Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much for watching.